Hello, my name is Janae. Welcome back to my channel or hello if you are new here. The temperatures have officially dropped in New York and it's been so cold lately. The lowest I've experienced this season I would say is about 20 degrees. And with this weather comes the time to bundle up and of course we see the puffer jacket make its way out of everyone's closet. Season after season we've seen North Face, Montclair, the Canada Goose, and every other brand's rendition of the puffer jacket. And on the topic of the puffer jacket, I noticed that growing up, the puffer jacket was my only option of staying warm in the winter. But I wonder, was it the only option? Or could you argue that myself and many others didn't have the financial access to stay warm any other way? Because I grew up on the cheaper synthetic insulation in a puffer jacket and then i would say a down jacket would be a step up from that a down puffer jacket then you start to move into real furs um, authentic shirlings that use real leather that type of category of jacket i think about those winter coat jackets and the jackets that used to be exclusive to the upper class or you know those are options that the majority wouldn't be able to afford i used to work retail at all saints in the city and when a customer would come in and drop one or two thousand dollars on a shirling jacket that was insane to me i don't know i was just thinking about the fact that i grew up wearing this synthetic puffer jacket the cheapest one that you can find and definitely puffer jackets are one of the best if not the best option for staying warm in extreme weather but there's definitely an expensive side to staying warm as i get older and jobs change i start to gain a little bit more of disposable income and that being said i dropped 900 dollars on a acne studios jacket and i wanted to share a little bit about the details of it acne studios as a company and towards the end of the video i will be sharing a couple canvas work jackets that i like on the market right now for those who don't know acne studios is a luxury fashion house based in stockholm sweden i noticed with the brands that i really like there is some correlation with stockholm sweden and good fabrics and tailoring there's high quality stuff coming out of that area or companies that are based in Stockholm. So I'd like to dive into that um, a little bit more and do my research on why that is, why I'm loving Stockholm right now. Acne Studios excites me every season and it was one of the first luxury stores that I ever walked into outside of like the big names like Gucci, Louis Vuitton. It was one of the first times that I was actively looking for luxury outside of the big names that i already knew so i actually bought this coat this time last year and it's by far the most expensive item that i own right now i walked into the men's section in their soho location and it was the last small smallest size that they had this is a 44 which was the smallest it came in i'm talking about this jacket as if it was love at first sight which it was when i first saw it i was like I'm gonna have this coat forever. When I'm 50 years old, tending to my farmland in Wyoming or upstate New York, this is the jacket that I'm going to be wearing. I've honestly been getting a lot of wear out of it and it's become a part of my everyday uniform, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to create um, some sort of capsule collection or live in a certain amount of pieces and create that sustainability for myself. So the fact that I know that this is going to be a piece that I will wear every season. That's the feeling that I'm going for when I'm buying designer clothes. Just to go over the details, this is the stonewash canvas jacket in black, but the stonewash finishing definitely gives the coat these brown, dark blue, dark gray undertones depending on what lighting you're looking at it in. The antique metal zip closures are a nice detail that I really like. There are two large kangaroo style pockets in the front and the overall fit of this jacket of course is oversized. This is a men's jacket that obviously was built for someone with a longer torso but because it covers so much on me it's perfect for those winter New York temperatures and I really like that I now have a cold weather option in my closet that's not a puffer jacket. The inside includes some fox fur shirling and I believe the same black denim but without stone wash so you can see the original denim and what it would look like without the stone wash. 
if it was stone washed on the inside as well i think it would be too much actually so i really liked that they left the black denim to just be as it is i think a very smart highlight to this piece was the collar they used a blue flocked denim but left the back in its original light blue color the acne studio logo sits on the inside and on the zippers as well i also noticed the made in romania tag on here on the inside and decided to look into that a little bit acne studios has actually been very transparent about their factories and suppliers they actually have a page on their website detailing the certifications and the audits that they perform on their suppliers in romania italy turkey china south korea bulgaria poland albania morocco and many many more so if you buy an acne studio piece you'll probably see one of these countries stamped on your purchase at some point here are some of the original photos that i found on the acne website this is what it would look like if it was on a male body type it's really big on me but oversized is how i usually go and i'm really in love with this piece and i'm so happy that i found it i was checking their website and i saw that they did do another stone wash jacket and um it's on sale right now i doubt that anyone would be able to pick this up now but i did see that they tried it again obviously that plays into carhartt and dickies which is where i would first go if it comes on to a canvas worker jacket i would definitely wouldn't go and get a regular worker jacket from acne studios i would go with carhartt or dickies first because those are the cheaper options but this jacket to me was more of a special play on that type of jacket and more heavy my normal carhartt jacket definitely would not last in the, the weather that i was in a couple days ago and i would even go vintage to get more of that wear look out of it i got mine from depop but i've seen them on grailed ebay just look up the canvas work jacket and i'm sure you can find something similar without the shirling lining on the inside this option is a little bit on the more expensive side but i saw one by fear of god that i really liked the same feel but obviously much lighter but it's a hundred percent lambskin suede the quality i just want to feel it i just want to touch it it looks really good and i love that collar i really like that american workwear borderline corp core look but i just wanted to preface that there's definitely way cheaper ways of course to get that look this to me was a special purchase and i don't want to shoot myself in the foot by saying this and end up buying another expensive jacket but to me this is all that i needed you know and i don't see myself going this hard for a jacket you know doing 900 dollars for a jacket again um there are other pieces that are expensive that I like to focus my attention on when I do get the disposable income and I save up for them. Um, but this was really special and I just wanted to share it with you. That's all I have for you today. I'm really proud of myself for posting my fourth video. I hope to keep posting twice a week and so that's been my new year's resolution and i'm i'm sticking to it so far thank you so much for watching i hope that you find a canvas work jacket that lasts in your closet the way that i have and i will see you in the next video